channel Fish and Freaks. We are going old school on you today. Currently it's just raining cats and dogs outside and I was deciding what should I do today and I thought while I'm up here at Guggen HQ, I'm going to do a line video. The reason I say this is an old school style video today is because I used to do uh, a lot more of these style videos where it's like informational breakdown and that's basically it. And as YouTube has evolved and I've become more of like an episodic style uh, channel, I just include this kind of uh, short knowledge in the videos, but today I'm diving deep. And the reason is right now is a time where tons of people are talking about fishing techniques and specifics and everyone's fishing across the country right now getting a lot of questions overall getting questions about line uh, when to use it where to use it the other reason is we've got Google squad line now partnered with Catchco on this and been working on this uh, for, for over a year and the lines are finally out. So I wanted to talk more about that and just use these as an example. And the reviews by you guys on shopcarls.com have been really good on the line. Uh, I wanted to run through the scenarios of lines, when to use specific types of lines, these three, the braid, monofilament, and fluorocarbon, and basically the different sizes that I use the most. Let's start out with the cheapest and most most common of the three and that is good old monofilament. This is what your dad grew up using right here and this is still to this day something that I always have spooled up on a few different rods for a few different reasons. The properties of monofilament that make it great are it floats so it's great to use for uh, top waters or anything you want to ride high at the surface. It also has a good stretch to it. Uh, stretch can be good a lot of times if you're fishing a bait that has uh, treble hooks or uh, you can just kind of match it with your rod to get that right uh, flexibility to where when that fish is shaking its head uh, or trying to eat the bait, it gives you a better shot to land that fish. One of the biggest reasons to use monofilament is the castability, the suppleness of the line. So monofilament's easier to manufacture than fluorocarbon. It has the floating aspect to it, the castability aspect to it, uh, and it's just, uh, it's got good stretch to it. So it's a, it's a good overall line if you're getting started into fishing for castability and uh, cost of course and it's just a, it's a good overall line and I specifically use it for uh, top waters I use it for spinner baits a lot of times uh, I'll use it for crank baits sometimes but I generally do not use it on any plastics uh, anything that uh, I'm having to really set the hook drive a hook through plastic on that's when I use braid and fluorocarbon now let's get to the meat taters the one that is talked about the most I feel is fluorocarbon when to switch to fluorocarbon why to use it and when to use it the main properties of fluorocarbon that I think make it the best overall choice for a bass fishing line are its uh, lower stretch the uh, abrasion resistance the density of the line, which makes it sink, uh, and the invisibility of the line. So fluorocarbon, even in clear water, the fish can't see it nearly as good as uh, monofilament and of course braid, braid's very visible. So on fluorocarbon, that is what I'm throwing 90% of the time on my Texas rigs and my jigs. I mean, I'm a jig man, I throw jigs a ton and I'm usually throwing between 15 and 20 pound. I think it is appropriate uh, because if you're using a, a heavier rod to drive the hook into the fish's mouth, I stay away from anything below uh, 15 if I'm using a, a stout rod. You know, anything uh, like a, a medium heavy, like a stiffer, uh, extra fast, medium heavy, up to a, uh, a heavy or e anything above that basically because when that fish eats that bait, and a lot of times they will, they will gulp it into their mouth totally, uh, and then they start swimming, and you take that fluorocarbon and you set the hook really hard, it's gonna rake across their teeth, and if you're not using a thicker diameter line, uh, it can break it, I've broken off many times. So the, really the only time that I go down to 12s is if I'm fishing 
a deeper, like clear water, dragging a football jig, something like fishing like the Ozarks or something like that, but almost always I'm, I'm at least gonna throw 15 pound fluorocarbon if I'm, I'm dragging a Texas rig or jig or a Carolina rig, something like that. And if I'm around thicker, heavier cover, uh, that's when I'm throwing 20 pound and sometimes even 25 pound, but 15 gets you by in most situations in most states. Now, if you're using an exposed hook, like for example, a wacky rig, where you don't have to set the hook as hard and you're going to a lower power rod, like a medium or a medium light, then it's okay to go down to like 12, 10, uh, even eight pound test if you're not really gonna set the hook that hard. But anything where I'm driving a hook through um, or a jig, I'm going 15 or above. Now, usually I'm also gonna use fluorocarbon on my crankbaits. Uh, anything that I, especially that I want to dive a little bit deeper because of the fluorocarbon, it sinks. If you're using monofilament with a crankbait, it'll tend to float it a little bit. So uh, I'll usually go down to like a 12 pound. I'm usually right around a 12 pound for uh, most crankbaits. If I'm shallow cranking like a square bill, I've got a 15 pound fluoro on here and I'm using that on a medium action, uh, shorter rod, a, a 610 rod that I can just kind of make short little uh, roll casts with and throw it around cover. So that's a little bit different. If you're fishing around cover, always you want to bump up your line size, uh, but also I, this bait doesn't need to go very deep, so I can throw a larger diameter and get away with that. Swim baits, most of the time I'm throwing the fluorocarbon. I'm throwing 20 pound fluorocarbon. Spinner baits, I'm 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. Anything that I'm fishing around cover uh, and it's a moving bait, it's usually 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. I would say 100%, if you have to get one line, a general use line, get 15 pound fluorocarbon. You can do so much with it. It's like the seven foot medium heavy action rod of line gotta have this one. Now last and certainly not the least and strongest of them all is braided line. If you've never used braided line, the properties on braid are there's just about zero stretch to it. So you can cast that thing as long as you can. Fish eats it, you set the hook, it's about the same as if the fish was five feet away. That's one of the uh, best factors about braided line is the hook sets. Uh, you're getting maximum power. The other thing that's great about it is the diameter is much thinner compared to monofilament or fluorocarbon. One of the bad things about braid is it's pretty much straight. You can see it in the water. I mean, if fish can see it clear as day. Abrasion resistance is a little different. So braid is great in, in grass and in logs and trees, things like that. But around rocks, around hard cover, uh, it, it, it is less than fluorocarbon. I know that sounds strange, but if you think about uh, how easily you could take a knife up against braid and cut it versus fluorocarbon, it's actually a lot easier. If your line is tight, just to slice right through braid because of all those little tiny little strands, then fluorocarbon, which is more of like a plasticky feeling material and will kind of fray uh, and shred before it cuts all the way through. Whereas this is just done. What does that mean in real life bass fishing situations? Well, if you're flipping heavy grass, trees, uh, you gotta get a fish out of something, maybe heavy dock cover, things like that that's not metal, uh, wooden docks. Braid can be a great option. If you're flipping around a lot of rocks or dragging your bait through rocks uh, or metal poles, things like that, nasty stuff, I would go with fur carbon. Number one thing people think about with braid is, I'm sure, a frog. And it is the best, y'all. I mean, if you're gonna throw a frog, throw it on braid. Most of the time you're throwing a frog in, in grassy situations, uh, around heavier cover. Uh, you need a good hook set. Uh, it's, it's everything that you could want when fishing a frog. That's the kind of line you wanna fish. The line that I actually fish the most, the pound test is 50 pound test. 65 used to be like the standard. Like when, when braid started getting really popular, everyone was throwing 65. I started using 50 about five or six years ago and I just found that the casting distance was great and I wasn't ever losing fish. Like I've never broke fish off 
flipping it uh, and especially frogging like it cut the lower diameter even cuts through the grass and lily pad stems better so I actually like to frog with 50. Now if you're just going after 18 pound bass in the nastiest cover ever maybe you go up to 65 but for most situations I found that 50 you're gonna get your frog in a better location it just casts easier and it cuts through the grass better and even flip it too I just like it it's better accuracy better now the situations where I'm throwing a lighter braid is if I really need to get a good hook set on uh, something I'm casting out a long ways if I'm fishing around grass I need zero stretch I'm gonna go down to like a 30 or a 40 pound braid most of the time it's 30 like uh, sometimes if I throw a swim jig or a spinner bait through some grass I'll go down to that on a casting scenario if I'm throwing a spinning rod with any kind of like shaky head any kind of plastic I need to set the hook through I'm definitely doing braid and then a fluorocarbon leader. That is the deal. Go down to 15 pound braid on a spinning reel. It will change your life. You're not gonna get any tangles, twists. The line, by the way, that has the most memory out of all three classes is fluorocarbon. This is where you're gonna have the most trouble uh, with spinning reels is if you fish a heavier fluorocarbon. With braid, almost never gonna have any kind of spiraling or twisting because it's so limp. Especially Guggen Squad braid, this is an eight strand Dyneema. And basically what that, ne that means is the, the higher the strands, the more round that the braid is going to be. So that means it's, uh, it's gonna lay better on the spool. So better casting, better line lay. That also means it's just gonna be smoother. It's gonna be quieter uh, going through the guides. It's just a better cast ability than a four strand. Heading the fluorocarbon leader to the braid on a spinning setup uh, for fishing little shaky heads and other little finesse things like this is just amazing. So I think for most water situations, 15 pound braid, uh, and then put you a 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader on there and tie, tie you a knot to that. And that's a, that's a whole nother knot. Y'all can look up double uni knots and things like that on YouTube and check that out. But that combo right there, it is, I think, unbeatable in terms of like getting a hook set uh, plus the invisibility. And if you tie a good knot on there, you're just gonna catch so many more fish. You're gonna feel a lot more bites. So that is the breakdown of lines in general, fluorocarbon, monofilament, and braid. If there's another type of line out there that I didn't mention that you use, let me know in the comments, but I think I covered them all. And there's more sizes coming in July. So there's gonna be uh, 17, 20, 25 in the fluorocarbon. We're going up to 65 on the braid. Uh, there's even some more sizes in the monofilament. One more thing to talk about that I did see in some comments about the line was, uh, you know, that it's made in Japan, that it wouldn't be as good as the stuff made in uh, USA, and that's just not true. The reason that we sourced this line out of uh, out of Japan is because they make the best fishing lines. The, the stuff that I was using uh, before I started using uh, Guggen line was made in Japan. A lot of the other tackle that I use, high-end stuff, uh, is is made in Japan. They make very very good uh, fishing lines. They make they make the best. Uh, so when you start doing uh, research to find the best manufacturers for these things, you wind you wind up there. So it's definitely not a bad thing. Just wanted to point that out. Premier place to get the line right now is shopcarls.com. You will get this as well as everything off the site, 30% off if you sign up to be a Shop Carl's member plus free shipping on anything. So it's actually a good deal if, if you're gonna buy some tackle this year. If you've already tried the line out, hopefully you like it, but let me know in the comments. Like I said, I've been using this stuff on my reels for a long time, many, many videos that y'all have seen and uh, caught some really big bass and I've just, I've been uh, happy with the, the castability, uh, their performance, uh, especially on the fluorocarbon, which is what I use the most and I just think uh, it's it's a win-win. I just think that the squad and our partners at Catch Go, we did a good job on it. So, glad to tell you about it. And it's been a while since we've done one of these deep dives into the technique specific stuff. Uh, so if you like that, let me know in the comments as well. So that is what I have for you today, everybody. If you wanna check out the home blogs, I will uh, leave them linked 
down below. Uh, I'm going to be uploading some of those while I'm overseas in New Zealand. Hey! All right, y'all. I'm going to get out of here. I love you. Thank you for subscribing right here to the channel. And we'll see you right back here on the next one. Later. Oh, 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 oh,